Thinking in specifics the way Temple Grandin does is typical of people with autism. As we've heard, this might help to develop special skills. If you see the details, you don't naturally see the big picture. And if you have problem reading others' minds, you're protected from the way other people see the world. You've got an original take on things, just as Temple Grandin found. People first wrote her off as crazy because she approached the cattle problem so differently. One theory about savantism is that it's this originality that might lie behind the creativity of some savants. As Uta Frith explained, this could be happening because the autistic brain isn't working the way normal brains do. What happens in the brain is that you need to control what your input processes deliver from the world outside by enhancing the things that are interesting and suppressing the things that are not interesting, irrelevant. And maybe it's that process that's not working in autism. So what would be wrong is not enough control, not enough inhibition from top down so that everything is equally interesting and is absorbed and is seen. So this might be a way, for example, to explain how somebody like Stephen Wiltshire can paint architectural panoramas with every detail correct. Normally when an ordinary person looks at a panorama, they see what they know so this is the kind of top-down effect, while possibly the special talent of the savant is to see much more what's offered, what's delivered through the senses without too much interference from this other knowledge. You're listening to The Science Show, which is about autistic people with extraordinary skills. It's the scene in detail that fascinates Professor Alan Snyder. He's the director for the Centre of the Mind at the University of Sydney. We come into the world seeing it in details, he says, and then we use those details to make holistic concepts. This enables us to deal quickly with what's familiar, but it also means we lose sight of the details that made up the concepts in the first place. He calls these details low-level information. He told me about his approach to the study of savantism. There are several theories of the what of autism, you know that people have a literal style, that people are... All the characteristics of autism, that's well-defined and beautifully catalogued. But what people haven't explained well is the why of autism. And I say it's due to the fact that autistic savants have privileged access to these lower-level information that exists in all of our brain, lower-level information before it's packaged into holistic concepts and meaningful labels. Now, that's what makes a, an autistic savant. Each of us have in our brain all the information necessary to draw, otherwise we couldn't see. But we're not privy to that. Instead, what children and the uninitiated draw are basically symbols of what they think is out there, not what is actually out there. Ah, oh, savants don't draw the symbols. They don't even know what they're drawing. They draw literally what they see. And they don't start drawing it with an outline. They start in a little point on the object and draw from there. So it's not a conceptual drawing. It's a detailed drawing. And it's this detail, it's this recall of detail that enables them to do what they do. Yes, I claim autistic savants are people who are bombarded with the details and not the, the conceptual meaning. So, for example, their memories aren't any better than ours. We have fantastic memory for faces, but they have, so to speak, fantastic memory for telephone numbers and things that have no meaning whatsoever. So the, the kind of information is the same, and then, or rather the, the number of details are the same, but the, the packaging of it, our memories are conceptual, their memories are, for want of a better word, detailed. Alan Snyder tests out his hypothesis that when we form concepts, we lose the details that went to make them up. His experiments aim to show the difference between conceptual and detailed thinking. He concentrates on the part of the brain that we use to form concepts and meaning, the anterior temporal lobe just above the left ear. He creates electrical currents there using a big electromagnet. And the idea is that the currents dampen down that bit of the brain and inhibit conceptual thinking. That makes it easier to remember the raw details. The experimental process is called transcranial magnetic stimulation. Well, we stimulate people with 
safe magnetic pulses for 10 to 15 minutes. We also have a sham a control session where we, they think they're getting it for 10 or 15 minutes and we look at what the effect is and we have people draw. We've, what have we done? We've looked at removing false memories. We've looked at drawing skills. Colleagues of mine are working on a number of interesting things which we're going to have to wait until they get published to tell you. This removing false memories, this is very interesting. Can you just tell me about that one? Yes, that's one of the newest things we've done. People don't have literal memories of events. They compile the, f the facts to meet their hypothesis of what they think has, has occurred. So, okay, that's a concept. So if I can use magnetic pulses to interfere with that concept and get to the attributes, the details that made up the concept, it's the same as all the other autistic things. And indeed, we have shown that you can reduce false memories. For example, I mean, to give you a perfect example, say I give you a list of words that go like this, um, flower, bush, dirt, all kinds of things having to do with the garden. Then I come back later and I say to you, did I mention tree? And you're going to think, oh, all those garden words, of course he mentioned tree. So in this experiment, you would give people a whole list of words to do with a garden, but you wouldn't mention garden. And you'd ask them, did I say garden? And, and they'd say, yes. And then you'd do the same thing with stimulating their brain or with the magnet on their brain and say, did I mention garden? And they'd say, no, you didn't mention garden. Is that how it works? Yes, that's exactly how it works. It's a brilliant device, isn't it, our, our brains? You know, we've evolved to be able to conceptualize and package things into concepts. That is what autistic people do not do. So, just to recap, to someone with a normal mind, the list of words related to garden adds up to the concept of a garden, and they'll believe they've heard the word garden, even if they haven't. To someone with an autistic mind, there's no concept of garden at all. There's just a list of details, and the word garden isn't amongst them. With autism not only think in details, they make patterns. Derek Paravicini's mind seems to be full of patterns of sound like little jigsaw pieces. His mentor, Adam Ockelford, has described his early playing as making abstract patterns in sound. The first time Derek hears unfamiliar music, he remembers some of these patterns. He fills in the gaps he can't remember with the jigsaw pieces stored in his memory. His initial playback is musically credible but not necessarily accurate. As Adam explained, the details arrive first, and the whole doesn't take shape until later. It's like a photograph that gradually develops over time. Yeah. So at first, uh, you know, when, when you see those old movies of people developing films and trays, of course yes. they do them now, but uh, in those days they did, and gradually the picture um, would appear, little details, and then the whole thing over time. And I think... Derek, your memory is like that, really. When you first hear a piece, you've just got some details, and you, the bits you can't quite remember, you kind of fill in with these jigsaw pieces. Yes. 